Hello and welcome to Board of It. I'm Farrell, this is Tally, and today we are going to be reviewing Coffee Traders, a big box game from publishers Capstone Games about fair trade coffee. You will be creating cooperatives with your competitors all across the globe in an attempt to allow small scale coffee farmers to bring their trade to a global market. And I have an admission in that I think coffee is really gross and I don't drink it. It smells really bad, so Tally will have to be your coffee czar today. What an absolute baby. Iced coffee for life. <laughs> it's gross. This box of coffee traders includes hundreds of wooden components, big table hogging boards, and plenty of crunchy Euro gameplay. And this gameplay includes plenty of resource management, worker placement with some nice twists, and economic gameplay. All the hallmarks of a big box Euro. Now, we've got a lot to say about coffee traders, both good and bad, so let's get straight to it. In coffee traders, you have a big central board with five cooperative coffee producing regions from around the globe. As coffee traders, you'll be building plantations which produce coffee and building buildings which provide bonuses on these regions. Once you've built the plantations, you can place workers on them, with bonuses being given if you place your workers on other players' plantations. All of these actions are done through pretty standard worker placement, with donkeys and trucks being needed to reach the higher levels of each cooperative. Next, you'll assign your traders to either trade with a region or build a building, with each costing money. Interestingly, just because you have a building on a certain region doesn't necessarily guarantee you coffee from that region. You actually have to send a trader there to buy the coffee. Building will let you build warehouses on your player mat, which will increase your coffee storage, or you can build other types of buildings on the cooperatives and each has their own type of bonus. Importantly though, both actions you can piggyback. So if one player trades with a region or builds, every other player can piggyback on that action for free or for a very small fee if it's building. Then you produce coffee. Each plantation will produce the same amount of coffee and the total amount of coffee in a single region will be divided by the amount of players that sent a trader to that region. Then once you have the coffee in your storage, you got to flip it. So the next step is to fulfill contracts or sell your coffee to various coffee bars from around the world. You'll repeat this process three times and then score up. Pretty much everything will get you points, so it allows players to go down the routes that interest them. In each of the cooperatives, there's an area control game with the players that have built the most there scoring points. You'll also score points for fulfilling contracts, for the coffee that you've sold to the coffee bars, there's points for moving up standard Euro type tracks. You'll get points for the buildings that you've built and for fulfilling certain milestones. So if you've watched us before, we're about to switch it up and talk about the bad stuff first. Reason being is that Coffee Traders is a $120 box. And for that amount of money, you wanna be getting a package that's worth it. And unfortunately, this game does have some very ugly issues that you should be aware of before we get on to talking about what we like. Beginning right out of the box, the setup is horrendous, as in to the point where if I ever had to set it up on my own to play it, I just wouldn't play it. And also in the same thing, if I knew that we were going to play it multiple times within one week, I would just leave it set up on the table because I would not get it out and pack it away and get it out multiple times within one week. It's just not worth it. And it also had one of my top three most horrendous first time setups in part due to how things came packaged, but also due to the manual, which is not very good. When showing how to set up, rather than doing what almost every board game manual does and showing a fully set up scenario or board and targeting where things go, they have a completely empty board and they just highlight the regions where things should go. But obviously the first couple of times you play, you're not really familiar with the terminology or the symbology and it was horribly confusing to try and figure out what things were and where they go with no imagery. It's actually criminal that a game this big and complex from a publisher as prestigious as Capstone Games has a manual this bad, especially when you consider the price point. 
Whoever designed the manual believes in using big chunks of text instead of diagrams, and when they do use diagrams, rather than using actual images of the board or of components, they kind of do these hand drawn diagrams that end up looking more like images that you'd expect to see on a coach's whiteboard in a sports movie than something that's actually tangible and helpful for you to understand. Some of these images I can look at now having played this a number of times and just by looking at it I cannot understand what is going on. Even worse, the manual has a habit of leaving out crucial information and then the players have to go looking for this information. I've never had to go on Board Game Geek for answers as many times in the first play of a game as I have for this game. One good example is that in the list of what happens when you complete a contract, it never actually states that you get money for completing that contract, which is crucially important, but if you want to know that, you better hope that you caught the one example where they mention it offhandedly in the book, or that you notice the symbology, which of course you don't know what it means in your first game, on your player board. On top of that, they never mention if you get your action cube and bonus tradesperson back at the end of the year. It's just never mentioned if they go out of the game or you get them back, which in your first couple of plays is also vital information to know. Essentially having to deep dive into this rule book every two minutes because you can't figure out what this minus rule is going to do or a player has a question, it kills all pace of the game your first few plays. Even the components don't escape our ire as nice as they look because we're really upset when we receive the game that lots of the components were broken or in most cases heavily dented. Then Coffee Traders includes these metal coins which obviously contribute to the high price point yet they don't match the game aesthetically and they're rather small and thin making them really awkward and unpleasant to handle and we're just not a fan at all. Then there's also just weird other little small component design choices. Scorepad, for example, they only include 20 sheets and they're not double-sided. So on one hand, I don't understand why they'd include it and have so few score sheets. On the other hand, why include it and be as unenvironmentally friendly as possible? And the biggest thing that I think is an absolute blunder is if you play two players, you have to play a variant with a fake third player. And there's a separate rule book for that, which is great. Yet you have to use, or they suggest you use, a kind of play map for this fake third player, but a specialized one. And they've printed it on the back of the rule book for the two player variant. So if you want to set up and use this um, play map, you can't do it at the same time. And if you want to check a rule while playing the two player variant, you can't do that either because how are you going to open it and look at it when it's full of components? So the two player variant is impossible to play either with this player map or without having a separate set of rules open on some sort of electronic device. It's just such a blunder. All that said, your first game will be a chore and there's no way around it. Coffee Traders is a tough and obtuse game to learn, even if the actions are fairly understandable once you've done them. Some of this comes from the fact that there are a lot of micro actions resulting from a main action that can be difficult to keep track of. And some of it is just down to the fact that there are many different options available to you and you need to think through them all. It's also the type of game that you really need to play through once or twice in order to know what to aim for. In our first game, one player who had messed up in everyone else's eyes ended up winning by an absolute landslide by taking the only option that was really left to him and it ended up being way more valuable than anything else seemed to be. Well, this negativity aside though, Coffee Traders does a lot of interesting things and has many interesting elements. One example is the player interaction, which is novel and collaborative. You see, it really feeds into the theme that you're all trying to build a cooperative together rather than becoming a money-grabbing monopoly. One example is that you can put workers on other players' plantations and you get a bonus for that, which means that players often will help each other out. Then in the third phase, you have piggybacking on actions, which means that players can do actions they want to do without paying the hefty fee due to other players, which allows you to have some really cagey yet productive table talk. And it all speaks to if you don't like negative interaction, you can like this game because you'll have so many positive ones.
And just looping back to that theme, it's ingenious how in the final scoring, the money isn't worth anything, further cementing that this isn't about money. Although that can be a little bit annoying from a gameplay perspective because the final round is typically when you're gonna make the most money. On the whole though, the mechanisms tie in particularly well with this theme, even if perhaps it's more imaginative than historically accurate. But everything ties together super well and it all feels very unique and fresh, much in the way making wine does in viticulture. It's a fascinating concept which can be hard to get your head around in that no matter how many buildings or plantations you have placed, they are for the workers and you are not entitled to any coffee from that region. You instead have to send a trader there and spend money. Further pushing this theme that everything you do is about allowing the coffee producers agency instead of being exploitative. It's also just a really fun and unique mechanic in that you can be having these ruthless area control battles in a region that you actually never obtain any coffee from. Just generally, the decision space is fantastic and nothing is easy to decide. There are no easy routes here. For instance, each building has a different bonus and each one is equally as valuable and you'll just have to weigh up against your strategy. Or the bonus supply. In a single round, you can take up to two of the three options available to you. And they are an extra action cube, an extra trader, or an extra three coins. And these are all things that you're gonna want to use throughout a round. And the decision about which two to take is an important one, which will really open up the game and allow you to do just that one more thing that you really need to do. We found this decision wonderfully AP inducing and a really smart design choice. Following a different train of thought, the symbology here is actually really great. Frustratingly though, it's never clearly explained in the core of the rulebook and never paired with the relevant text. But if you play a few games or if you just study the appendix, it becomes very apparent very quickly. And what is wonderful about the system of symbology is that it breaks down a very complex game into simple parts at any point during a round. And it's particularly good at reminding you the rewards that you are due. And a real treat is the way that the player boards move from left to right through the phases of a round. It just makes the round structure become intuitive. And Coffee Traders is just a game that looks amazing. It's vibrant, it's cute, and it's got a wonderful table presence. So our main gameplay issue is the randomness of the middle phase, which makes it hard to strategize in a strategic Euro game. In the first phase, you'll be setting yourself up for the rest of the round and planning the moves in your head for the rest of that round. But in the third phase, where you obtain coffee, it's almost impossible to plan unless the other players verbally reveal their hand. You really can't know what coffee the other players are gonna go for or if they're gonna build anything. So you have this whole phase where you just have to play it by ear and work with what you've got. And that can really torpedo your plans for the contract phase if you didn't get what you'd hoped for because the other players went in different directions than what you expected. And the other thing is that this is played over three rounds or years. And in the final year, because your engine has been built up, you're going to be generating more resources than ever and getting more rewards. Yet the game practically nerfed these for the final scoring. I mean, you're gonna end up with a lot of donkeys and civet cats and maybe some trucks, and they're all kind of a little bit useless to you. And a great example is that if you wanna get a truck, one way is to move up the Arabica track, five, sorry, five different Arabica tracks, three steps each, which is, I think we agree, really hard to do before the beginning of the third round, which is the last possible time you could use that truck. And it just what we're trying to say is that we're just not a fan of games where they make resources vitally important to the gameplay for the entire game and then let you end up with a lot of them that you can't use because you can only use them in specific phases at the end of the game and then make them just not worth very much if worth nothing at all. We've played with different player counts and the two player variant is pretty good and simple to run. It doesn't feel too much different from a real three player game. The higher you go, the more cutthroat it is. The main board and the coffee tracks don't change with more players, so you get more crunch. You also get one less trader, making it much harder to do everything that you want to do in the third phase. Our view is that it is better with three to four players, but we've played it a whole bunch with a two-player variant and we're really happy with it. So, 
Final thoughts, and this is a difficult one to sum up. The gameplay is pretty excellent, and if you're a fan of big heavy Euros, Vital Lacerda games, or tough decision making, this would be an easy recommendation for us to give. However, the fact is, is that it costs $120, which is a lot. And Coffee Traders doesn't exist in a vacuum, and for the same price, you could buy multiple other brilliant smaller games, or other big box productions like Kanban EV, On Mars, Gloomhaven, etc., none of which have as many issues as our copy of Coffee Traders. And the amount of effort this manual makes you go through to have fun is not worth the price or the gameplay. For us, the ideal solution would be a second printing, better manual, non-broken components, and ideally get rid of these metal coins, and hopefully that will allow them to lower the price point. You see, we want people to play this game. We enjoy playing this game. There's a lot of new, novel things here. You know, we really like the player interaction, how collaborative it is, yet really cutthroat at the same time. It oozes charm, and there's just so much to like about it. But with the current price point, the issues, and the fact that you have other games in the market that don't have these problems, it's hard to justify it. So that was our review of Coffee Traders, which Meg has obviously had enough of. It was a long one, wasn't it, Meg? <laughs> so if this was helpful in any way, we'd love it if you could subscribe. We've got plenty of other reviews. Uh, and please tell us what you thought about Coffee Traders or if you have any questions, we'd love to help you out. But thank you. And yeah, shall we go, Meg? Is it time to go? That's Meg's thoughts. Oh, my God. Traders. See ya. Bye-bye.